Okay, a very good afternoon here on Friday the 27th of September 2019. My name is Rishi Patel, co-founder of Master the Markets, the Elite Traders Conference and the Traders Open Day. And a warm welcome in to the market update uh, this evening here. Uh, this afternoon here on this Friday. Uh, as you know, for those of you that are regularly subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, we conduct a market update every Friday. If you want to get that, then you need to click the subscribe button uh, on YouTube to be able to uh, get the updates on a regular basis. Uh, but we do this every single Friday, so we'll do an update. And this is superb because it gives us an element of accountability uh, to our customer base in terms of the trades that we're taking and publicly showing the results that we have. As you know here at Master the Markets, full transparency, uh, regardless of profit or loss. And you can see that throughout our transparent track record, which we've held now for seven years. Let me go straight into the uh, trades that we've taken uh, this week so far. So there's quite a few trades, so I won't go into everything, but I will pick up on a couple of them. So the highlights really were the lift off 3.0 trading strategy, which really gave us multiple signals this week um, on the Aussie dollar and the Euro Yen. So let's start by looking at the Aussie dollar. Um, again, here you can see the entry point into the trade was the low of uh, this primary just here. Uh, so we entered on the low of the primary. Let me uh, go ahead and bring open the Epic pen, which will allow us, of course, to just scribe on the screen so you can see that taking place just there. Uh, low of the primary uh, is this point just here. That's where we actually entered the market. So your entry actually point is there. So I'll make a note for entry. Stop loss above the high. Uh, of course, when we entered this, we couldn't actually see uh, any of this information here. From this point onwards, we had no data. None of this had happened. And the idea was a lift off, short opportunity on the market, just given that information just there. So we entered the market there, stop loss there, and as you can see, that did run. Now, we did make a mistake on the cash. Um, we didn't account for some news that was coming out around FOMC. So unfortunately, I was stopped out for here for break even uh, on the company account just there. So we were out for break even, but the system did catch it. The system did catch it, and we're still in the trade on the system. As of this point in time, our stop on system is behind the 20 period moving average. So we are got a stop in behind here. Now, this is looking like some buying pressure coming today. This could easily knock that stop out uh, just today. Uh, or it could turn around and continue to go down and hit our profit target, which is denoted by this green line just here. So in any case, what I have done uh, on the cash position is broken even. Uh, and also we called the exit point on the market just here on the close of this seller bar. And there's a very specific reason that we did that uh, for, uh, there's an exact rule set actually on why we actually called that as an exit point in the market. Uh, the close of that bar is actually where we got out. So obviously yesterday it looked as though it was gonna push further down and today it is moving back up against us. So congratulations for those of you that did get out on this bar just here, that looks like, at the moment at least, that looks like the correct move to have made just there. You'd have locked in a very tidy profit actually on that one. If you had done that, your profit on that trade would have been on the close here, 6753. Your profit would have been 2.4% on that trade. Uh, out of a profit target of 4.19, you would have taken 24 which is very, very healthy indeed. So, okay, that's it on the Aussie dollar and Euro Yen. We had something similar happening. Now, we entered on the close of the primary here. Again, we didn't have any of this data. Uh, we had none of this information just here. None of this information uh, we had when we entered the trade, uh, but we entered this trade knowing that there was a gap on the market, knowing that that gap was there, we entered that trade regardless. Then of course the next day it did push up against us, close the gap, but then it fell all the way off. Now this is a little bit different because on the system, uh, our stop was actually above the high here and the stop on the system got knocked out, okay? But on the cash, we held this and this has run and we've banked a profit again we closed our trade on this bar just here the same day that we closed the Aussie dollar trade. Uh, and this time on cash, we did catch it as well. So we closed on that particular bar just there and we banked a 0 0.2, 2.44% profit 
uh, on cash just there. If you had taken that on the system for the full 1% again, uh, system did get knocked out of the trade. So system is reporting a loss of 0.79 because it actually got stopped out uh, on the high just here. When I say system, what I'm talking about is the way that the strategy would have been executed um, should a computer be actually taking the trades and there'd be no mistake whatsoever. Uh, and system spreads are accounting with three pips, but our cash, of course, is a lot less than three pips. We have cash spreads on Urien of around about 0.8 to one pip. So because of that, our cash stayed in and our system got knocked out. Uh, system spread is three because that's how we tested it. Okay, so those were the highlights really on the lift off, and then also on the cash in strategy. The cash in strategy is a beta strategy, so I didn't normally report it on that, but I just wanted to let you know about what the cash in strategy did do uh, this week because it's important to understand the cash in strategy and its contribution as well here, really, to the curve. So we did actually take a very healthy profit um, on the cash in on the Aussie dollar. Again, uh, we entered on the confirmation bar close this time, cash in entered a little later. And what we found was that even though we entered late, boom, we still took it down to here. We got out on this bar just here. And that actually banked, let me tell you, actually on cash, that actually banked 1.4%. So that was a 1.4% move that just then. The reason for that is because we have quite a tight stop around this particular trade. It was an accumulation setup on cash in 3.0. So we took quite a nice profit on that one. And also, small loss on the dollar yen. We also took this trade here on dollar yen as a cash in setup. Again, entering on the confirmation bar close. It pushed lower. We broke even pretty quickly. Uh, but this bar, of course, did come back against us. And that, as a result, that, that knocked us out on the stop for the tight trail and the break even stop. So that actually took us out for a loss of 0.14%. And when you accumulate all of this together, uh, what you actually get is a total profit, um, as I've reported in, of 1.48%. Um, and that also includes some of the uh, elite setups that we also took here as well. The Vedanta Elite team entered on the low of this PSWB with, again, none of this other information was available, just this buyer bar. Uh, sorry, they didn't enter on the PSW, my mistake. They entered on the primary close here. So they entered here on the close with none of this other information. Uh, and that, of course, pushed lower, but then it came back against us as well. But we took a small profit on that. Uh, there was a small loss on IB Elite and a small loss on Prime Profits Elite. But that all led to a result cumulatively of all the, all the strategies of 1.48% uh, for £1,480. So that's the complete update in terms of positions. What I'd like to do is now review the other world markets and also uh, go over the topic of the week, which is one key tip for backtesting and specifically backtesting for MT4 is what I want to do with you. Okay, so let's continue on with a quick analysis of world markets here uh, to see how uh, things are performing. And you can see certainly with gold, um, it's continuing that aggressive uptrend. Here we're looking at a weekly chart. Uh, and what we're seeing is that the move, of course, started from around the $1,200 region, which is around here. Uh, and from there, we had an aggressive move higher. Now, the open equity of this particular move may already have been extinguished here to the upside. And as a result of that, we might now start to see this here becoming a top. Uh, and for that to happen, of course, the price will move lower and confirm uh, a top. So once that happens, there's no reason why that uh, upward trend shouldn't continue on. Uh, so given the current news, and I think what we need to do is understand this and look at it. Uh, and perhaps if you're looking to get into a longer term move on gold, once that swing high here does confirm and the open equity on this move here uh, does extinguish itself, then it may be an opportunity to get in for a longer term upward move if you're looking to get into gold. It's an interesting chart there. Uh, oil, uh, again, not having much success, may we making a breakout to the upside here. Uh, obviously, over the last year, 2019, uh, we have seen a move higher in general, uh, where we started the year in around about the $44 region, uh, now at $56. But again, you can see it's struggling to make any kind of real direction since April up until now. Uh, so again, you know, something to be on the lookout for if you're taking short term trading opportunities in gold, we are really working within a range here. Um, and it may not be the most 
best trending market to deal with at this time. Quite choppy. You can see that the open equity on each of the moves that's taken place between high and low here, top to bottom, is quite small. Uh, the FTSE 100 on the weekly side, again, really struggling to make new ground, the FTSE 100. And again, this is true of most indices that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, again, if you look at that, you know, we're, we, got, we got a top here at the 70. 880 mark and after that again we've been hovering in a range around about here for quite a while now the same thing applies to the dow jones and this is something that we are actually looking to adopt a short position on for the longer term we've reached an all-time high here uh, this last swing high and this could very well be a last kind of final breath to the upside before we see a longer term downward move so again we're looking to get into something here and start to build a position to the short side so be on the lookout for that especially if you're in the elite room we're definitely going to be discussing uh, the viability of getting involved and how we'll scale in to one of these positions just here on the dow for a longer term downward move so a quick update on the world markets now i want to quickly go over a tip for back testing, which I normally use, uh, which I found very, very useful indeed. So what I normally do is when I'm back testing, instead of let's say that I wanted to analyze this particular setup here, this was a, a lift off uh, setup, which we took. Um, it's also a money bar setup as well, both. So this lift off setup, if I wanted to have analyzed this in real time, um, if I look at this and I say, OK, um, I look at it, the chart like this as it is here and I say, OK, my entry would have been here. My stop would have been on the high here. My target would have been wherever my target was. And then I take that move to the downside. And that's great. But the issue is I can already see the huge downward move that's already happened here. And what that means is that my mind is now biased towards thinking, oh, yeah, great. You know, this has made money and, you know, this is great and, and everything else. And it may lead me to missing some of my trailing stop rules or something like that. And that, of course, isn't ideal at all. Now, what we're looking for, actually, is, um, yeah, what we're looking for, actually, if you look at it systematically and strategically, the be there's two key things that you can do here. I put one backtesting tip, but I'll give two. I mean, the first thing that you can do and that I would do is I would pull the chart over to the left so that I cover what is on the right and I can only see the entry bar. So now in MT4, I've got the ability to do that where I've moved the chart now and I can only see the entry bar and the actual setup. I've got everything I need to determine that it's set up. For example, I can see here, I've got the failed primary. Boom, that has failed just there. That means I need to take this, okay. Uh, particular setup, I need to put an entry on the low. My stop is on the high. And then what I'll do, tip number two, is that I will actually go ahead and press F12. Now the F12 button on the keyboard is really, really critical. So there it is, you can see it there, the F12 button. Now if you're using a Mac um, and you press the F12 button, I've noticed that the function keys don't actually work because they increase or lower the brightness or something like that. And you can disable that setting in the control panel on a Mac. So if you want to, you can actually um, you can actually uh, disable those function keys using the brightness and things like that and use them as pure F12. And when you do that, you start to get bar by bar increment. And then what I do is I get to the next bar and I stop and I assess and I ask myself the question, okay, do I need to trail my stop? Um, would I have uh, moved anything here? Is my entry valid still? Uh, is the trade still valid? Is there anything to do in terms of trailing stop loss? How far have I gone away from the 20 moving average? All of these questions can start to be considered in a slow systematic way. And that's what happens when you actually use the F12 key because you're actually doing it slowly and systematically. You're not going to miss anything. So this is what I'll strongly advise for anyone doing any kind of back testing through the market on a manual basis like this. This is the correct way to actually assess the market and put it all together. So that's the key. Um, let's understand that and uh, let's implement this because this is a superb way of doing it. A lot of the time in one-to-one -one coaching, where the 20,000 plus clients that we've coached, myself and Tiro, um, a lot of the time we see when we're teaching backtesting, a lot of people get trigger happy, they expose the whole chart, then they get confused very fast. And of course it's natural that you wanna see what's happened, but you need to do it step by step if you want to be sure you're getting it right. Uh, because that will put your mind um, single-pointedly focused on the current bar as opposed to seeing the whole chart.
Okay, I trust that that's helpful. I look forward to speaking to you all soon in another market update or a Traders Basecamp event. Next one coming up on 9th and 10th of November. Get in touch with the team to find out more. Look forward to speaking to you all soon. Until the next time, stay disciplined, follow your trading plan, keep trading like a master. Bye for now.